Going, going live. Off we go into Never Never Land. We are live. Yeehaw. All right, let's start this other little tingy majingy. All right, let's see here. I got to adjust mine. I had to play with my microphone input. So, testing one, two, three, four. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Welcome to the party, everybody. We have a party. <laughs> hey now, y'all. Can we just get real? Do we really care about our fans, or is this just another deal? Said another way that we lost our way. Social's about the people, remember? We are people. Do we really need another like, fan, or share? Do we need another post to show up everywhere? I hope as we scatter that we never forget that our posts live forever, even when we go to bed. So connect with me. Let's have this some so fun. Bad. Let's show the world how this gets done. Let's get social. Social. Social media. Let's get social. Social. With social media. Then we can spread the word and grow our Shyster show up and take advantage of people's goodwill and generosity. <laughs> All righty. It got started, so I just had to let it play out, man. It's it's such a totally horrible, <laughs> horrible song. So something exciting that I've been doing. What's that? Um, I, uh, uh, we have a family member who both the girls and I are pen pals with. Mm -hmm. And ever since I got my night ring and my sealing wax, I get to use sealing wax on a letter at least uh, once a month when I write. Cool. It's really exciting because I actually have somewhere to use my sealing wax. Yeah. I used it one year when I sent out Christmas cards to all my uh, customers. I sealed each and every Christmas card with it. Cool. I'm, I'm getting really good with it. Yeah. At first, it was just kind of a mess. Yeah. It, take, <laughs> it takes a little bit of practice. <laughs> it's a, it's an art that's long since been lost to uh, to us as using ceiling. Letter writing, period, is a lost art. It's a kind of be coming back. I mean, my 14-year-old ended up getting some ceiling wax and a bunch of different little things to make the designs with for Christmas because mm -hmm. she was she's really into it. Mm -hmm. So it kind of seems to be coming back, or maybe my kids are just weird. Your kids are just <laughs> weird. Your kids are just weird. Most kids would rather send texts. On a phone. They don't even make Fair phone enough. calls anymore. They want to type things into a phone or sit on their computers and play games and social media via the games. Oh, YouTube. YouTube and watching other people play games seems to be really popular for some reason, which I, I don't get it. Yeah. Why watch other people play games? Yeah, I, I guess because you they can't play them themselves as effectively, and it's really kind of cool to watch somebody who's really good play the game. You know, I've 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 been drawn down that rabbit hole a couple of times with games. Usually, what I do is I use it to learn how to play the game better. Yeah, but that's different. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're learning something. Like I, I I've met quite a few people now who they just like to watch people play games, yeah, well. not learning from it. They just enjoy it like a movie, and it's it's weird to me. I mean, I understand watching a ga someone play a game if you're sitting in the same room, yeah. so you can actually like have conversation and talk about the game or whatever while the game is being played. It's just kind of like background visual stuff, but. Oh, yeah. That's the way it all works, though. Say la vie. Lots and lots of crazy stuff are happening in the world today. Indeed. People aren't as connected as they used to be. And yet we're more connected than ever. That's that the, one that's, really gets me. Because like, yes, we are. Hmm? So that's the whole irony of it, yes. Yeah, it's so easy to connect. Like uh my phone like when everyone lost their phone on Monday. Oh yeah, that was all nice. of a sudden we couldn't connect, but we're so used to not connecting. So we connect without connecting. It's so strange. Mm hmm Yeah, that is a little bit on the strange side and uh Oh, oh, man. 
And uh, but the number of people who went who went batshit crazy because they couldn't connect to their telephone for I think it was out for what ten hours, eleven hours, something like that. Something like I don't that. know. I didn't really notice. It, it started early in the morning, and it started early in the morning. I noticed it around eight a.m. when I when I went to make a phone call, and I'm like, oh, oh why is it going not going? And I look, oh, well, the phone needs rebooted. I reboot the phone. And it's got no service. I'm like, what? No service. I'm like, what do you mean no service? That's unusual. All right, so pop on to uh, pop on to the internet. Well, my internet works, so that's not the problem. Okay, let's see. Is Fido out? Oh, sure enough, they have a can- they have a Canada wide outage. <laughs> Canada wide, man. All their major major cities were com- were out, and of course, probably about I would say between thirty and forty percent of the cell customers in Canada are Rogers and Fido customers because it was a whole Roger Fido network that went down. Yeah, well, Rogers, Fido just happens to be owned by Rogers now, yes. which is sad. Oh, I know, but but still, it was because, you know, we only have like three or three major carriers of uh, telephones here in Canada. Rogers, yeah. Fido, and TELUS, and then all the, you got all the small ones, but they all their data is carried over either Rogers or Rogers or TELUS's lines anyway. That's the one thing that everyone doesn't get. Oh, let's get a Kudo phone. It's cheaper. It's still being carried over <laughs> Rogers or Fido's network. You know, cause- well, I I am definitely going to be doing a deep dive into this for our Tuesday show, mm-hmm. looking for all the crazy, wacky conspiracies that come alongside of this. Oh, yeah. There should be quite a few on that. Oh, yeah. It should be so entertaining just to look at some of the conspiracies. I'm sure one of the conspiracies will have something to do with unicorns. Oh, I don't know what it... <laughs> there's always a unicorn one, man. Where would the world there's be always without, one. You know, where would the world be without <laughs> the unicorns taking over? we got to have <laughs> unicorns to take over. But that's the way we go. All right. I got to get ready and get the heck out of here as soon as it's showtime is done. Take Running me. out like you're behind is on fire. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. <laughs> Running for the hills. Actually, you're supposed to go up into the hills this weekend. You're supposed to go up into the gold mine this weekend. Oh, cool. Be- I've been wanting to go check that out. Yeah. I've been down in the mine once. Yeah. And it's uh pretty interesting. That's where I've got this really cool photo somewhere of uh somebody painted a skeleton on the uh, on one of the walls of the mine down there. Graffiti at graffiti at the 500 foot level of the mine. <laughs> it's a really cool That piece would be of, really cool. Really cool piece of graffiti. Let's see if I if I got easy access. I get I do got relatively easy access to it. Let's see we'll bring it up here. Let's see, where is that graffiti? It'd be really cool if there was like a whole line of dancing skeletons painted down all the walls of the tunnel. No, nah, there's just the one. Just the one. I know it's in here somewhere. I've used it a few times. The world would be lost without the unicorns. Perhaps. Yeah. But what about uh are, do you think the unicorns are having a race war over the over the rainbow ones versus the white ones? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Cuz there's rainbow ones and orange ones and like every color of the rainbow as well as the multicolored ones and, and the white ones. There he is. Oh, that's cool. You should throw that up on the screen so everyone can see. Yeah, well. We'll do that after after we uh, go live. It's time for some good music and bad singing to go live. We'll let that be the first uh, good thing times. when we go live. story don't even have my own in the search for glory gone with them sacred rules of old they went missing down highway 49 devils at the crossroads sitting doing time preacher man discovered 
you pass down from saint to sage Like a kind-hearted lover who's been lost on this stage Went missing down Highway 49 Devil's at the crossroads sitting doing time what he's doing to another fun filled show <laughs> so i guess uh we're close enough now we're a minute or so early what the hell we'll just start going i'm timing's off a little today that's all right better early than late i always say all right True. Well, let's wind this puppy up and get the show on the road ladies and gentlemen it is time for wordpress plugins a to z not Z. Hmm. It's a flocking good time. Episode <laughs> 508 of WP Plugins A to Z. And we have plugins for watching the earth, making sure it fits, searching, login controls, tracking sales, going flocking crazy, and classic press options all coming up on WordPress plugins from A to Z. WordPress. It's the most popular content management and website solution on the internet. And with over 80,000 plugins to choose from, how do you separate the junk from the gems? Join us for a weekly unrehearsed conversation about the latest and greatest in WordPress plugins. This is WordPress Plugins from A to Z. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be hiding out there on the globe today. Coming to you direct from the brewery overlook in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, I'm John Overall, and with me is the ever-lovely... Amber Overall. And we have the great show for you today. Of course, a couple of quick things right out the top. 
Make sure you have a look at the new system for submitting artwork to the show over at WP Plugins, A to Z.com slash artwork. You know, really could appreciate some uh, new art and fresh artwork there. I am running low. A couple more episodes. I'm going to have to do it myself. So, hey, artists, step it up, man. We need some fresh artwork. Almost to the point where I got to do it myself again. We are also now 57 weeks into the Rona lockdowns and the world lost its freaking mind and went even crazier. There are small signs of hope here and there, not really in Canada, but let's keep going out there, spread the word that things are not as bad as they say they are, and hopefully we'll get some people back to the light. I mean, after all, it is Earth Day today. Celebrate the Earth. Get out there. Help it shine. Go do something useful. Build a garden. Go wander in the forests. Yeah, well, with all of that... Thank you for sharing, John. Now get down from that soapbox. <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to get sick of that. <laughs> this is number 16 of 52 episodes for 2021. It's episode 508, and it appears that spring has decided to stick around for a bit. Gotta love when the little Death Star pollens find their way into your system, make you sound like you're dying. They can at least make you sound cool, like Darth Vader or something. Well, yeah. They do what they do. <laughs> Honestly, though, allergies aside, I do love this time of year. Everything looks and feels so fresh and new. Everything is growing and green and pretty. And spring cleaning happens, which it may be a cliche, but it really is a thing we all do one way or another every single year. But it doesn't have to stop with the physical stuff. Spring clean your mind from all the prattle online and on the tube by retreating from the world to a comfy spot where you can lay about and listen to some music. Or maybe catch up on that podcast or audiobook you've been thinking about. Grab yourself a drink and tell your kids to go catch fish or frogs. Trying to find frogs at this time of year should keep them busy for hours. Never be afraid to tell your kids to bugger off for an hour. It's, o it's totally allowed to demand that they not bother you unless they are broken, dying, or bleeding for the entirety of the hour. Send them outside with a can of nails, a hammer, and some old wood and tell them to build a fort. Let them try the neighbor's nuts with the hammering while you go and catch up on some you time. Remember, remove all social media and mainstream news during that one hour to yourself. Rinse and repeat as often as needed. Absolutely. And also another quick reminder, don't forget, stick around at towards the end of the show for the Q&A segment with Amber, which we split in two. You know, half of it stays here on the podcast. The other half goes to the YouTube channel. So you want to catch the other half, you've got to wander over to the YouTube channel. Please, can everybody be quiet? Please be quiet. Shut up! Thank you. And now the WordPress news with John Overall. And Amber, we got some, she gets to lead the charge on the news this week. Uh, she collected it all, so off you go, kid. <laughs> all right, well, uh, the first one, my computer will obey me, is uh, Siri spilling the beans on Apple's 420 event. <laughs> uh, we don't actually know if uh, if Apple has a 420 thing coming up. It's just that Siri has been talking about it, which is a little strange. They're supposed to be revealing a new iPad Pros, possibly some AirTags, Smart Tracker, all for 420. But Apple hasn't actually spoken up, hasn't actually said anything. If nothing else, this has a quite entertaining page to go to and check out. Yeah, looks interesting. But if it was for 420, what had happened a couple of days ago? Yeah, I guess I put that up before. Whoops, my bad. Yeah, well, you put it in there when it was still relevant. We just didn't realize the show was on the 22nd. And I have no idea if Apple had it. Oh, Apple did have a major event and major announcements. We'll talk about that at the end of the news. I brought that news to the show. Okay, cool. Uh, the next one is it's a cumulative layout shift debugger, which I have a basic understanding Essentially, have you ever visited a website and was about to click a link to an article and then the layout suddenly moves, an ad appears, and somehow instead of clicking on the article you want to read, you click on the useless ad? Yeah, happens the, all the time. This debugger is supposed to fix that. Hmm. So I have a basic understanding of how it works. I know what it does. I just, this is for people who have a full understanding. Check this out because it helped me to understand entirely, well, fully what it is doing. So it's well written. Good. Excellent. Next one is uh, WordPress jobs. Now, I don't know if anyone is really searching for a job, but if you are, this is a listing of the jobs that are currently available for WordPress. 
They are very interested in finding more people. They're, they're offering full-time positions. I don't think they're offering part-time, just full-time. But if you're looking for a job, this is a good place to go. Yeah, it looks like a great listing of jobs on this website. Looks like some useful stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the next one is headless form submission with the WordPress REST API. What this does is it goes through and it teaches you how to use a form that does not have REST API if you're using a headless form. So it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty good. It's got some pictures to help take you along and it explains different things like submitting the data, the different steps, how to do it, field validation, all that stuff. So if that's something you need to know about, it's a good one to go to. Excellent. Not much for me to be interested in on that one. <laughs> the next one I've got is uh, what is new in Gutenberg? Uh, yeah, you you really got to dive down this one. Start learning all the stuff that's in Gutenberg. Yeah. Eventually, everything that's in the Gutenberg plugin is being pushed to the core, to the WordPress core. Cause that's where they're doing the experiments is in the Gutenberg plugin. Yeah. And this came out on April 14th, so if there's any bugs, I'm sure that they will show up soon. Mm -hmm. I did, wasn't able to find anything on any bugs that have showed up since they released it, but this is just a list of what they came out with on the 14th. Looks like they got some design updates and scripted publishing UI, a whole lot of stuff there. So if you want to keep up with Gutenberg, this is a, definitely a place to go wander in to do that. And the next one I have is how to enable classic editor in wordpress.com. I know we've put up a couple things about this, but I feel like it's a good thing to keep putting it up because it seems to keep changing. Yeah. Well, it's going to keep changing. The one problem with the classic editor is when they introduced and crammed Gutenberg down our throats uh, in 2019, they said they were only going to support <clears throat> the classic editor until 20 until descent the end of December 2021 well we're a few months away from that now the end of this mm. year and after that point nobody knows exactly what WordPress is going to do will they push it out and continue supporting the editor or are they going to push it completely out of the core and make it so that everyone must use Gutenberg you know and with the fact that the they have a plugin restore the classic editor plugin that was built, it's one of the most installed and most active plugins aside from an the anti-spam plugins in WordPress right now, which tells you mm. a lot of people are still using the classic editor. So it's hard, yeah. really hard to say what they're going to do. I mean, lots of people love Gutenberg, but it's, there's, it's, I, I personally, I would say it's about a 50, 50 split in the, in the community. Just, mm -hmm. just from even websites that I get asked to look at, help people up, and I look in, sure enough, they've got the classic editor enabled. So yeah, so yeah, you want to take a look at it. If you if you if you're getting into Gutenberg, get into Gutenberg. You got to got to choose one road or another. And I chose my road, but that's all it, there is to it. <laughs> uh. This next one is about an event. It's from April 20, it's on April 27th and 28th. It is a virtual event for web designers and developers to get together. It's being put on by GoDaddy. Hmm. It, it should, it seems like it would be interesting. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to do it. If they're going to do zoom or what Probably they just zoom. say that it's going to be virtual. Probably zoom or they'll just stream the, uh, stream the speeches. Okay. Yeah. You know. One of the two. It's pretty much what they've been doing for a while. Okay. Well, uh, if anybody is interested, this seems like it would be at least interesting to check out. If they're just streaming it, then mm -hmm. that gives you the opportunity to just kind of look up their things and follow along whatever is most interesting. Cool. And, wow, I have a lot of news here, more than usual. <laughs> yeah, there's, you only got a couple more. We're almost there. All right. Uh, this one is about setting up an office space. I know a lot of people are working from home and I, I know from my own experience that setting up a little space where I can work while still be part of the house, but still have my own separate space from the house when I'm busy, it's been a little hard. I mean, I finally figured it out, but this place actually has some really good tips. Yep. So if anybody's still having trouble making a space for themselves in their house to do their work and get their things done, 
this would be a great thing to check out. It, it, it will get you started at the very least. Yeah, this uh, looks like it has some good information and tips in it. So yeah, the working from home is hard, people. Believe it or not, it's very hard. I've, yeah. been, doing, I've been doing it now for just about 15 years. In the first few years, it was very difficult. And even now, I still find it difficult. The biggest problem about working from home is that you can work anytime you want. The hardest problem is separating and stopping working walking yeah. away from your computer and not doing anything. Like if you have an office you go to and do your work, you know you're there for certain hours, you do your work, you leave it, and you don't think about your work. When it's at home or it's in your living room, you walk by it and you think of your work. So yeah, working from home is hard. A lot of people are learning that now. They've learned it in this last year of uh, lockdowns. So That's interesting. Most people actually thought that if you worked from home, it meant that you would never get any work done. What yeah. they're finding out is that if you work from home, you tend to not get any life done. That's what happens. You don't get, people don't, they, they tend to work too much. They over, they overcompensate yeah. and they burn out. Uh, this next one is, it's a security thing. Um, it's put out by patch stack, mm -hmm. which was recently rebranded as web arcs. Mm -hmm. And it's about the WordPress security issues found in 2020. This is a report on it. And mostly these security issues came from third parties. Yes. Only. Hmm? Go ahead. Keep going. I was just commenting. You got you to gotta <laughs> learn to keep talking when somebody comments. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Ninety-six point twenty-two percent of the security issues came from third-party plugins. Mm -hmm. So this is this is actually a really good thing to look into and read about. It helped me to understand what the major, most major issues were. They name a couple of things here that caused the biggest issues, the biggest security problems, the ones that got the patches, the ones that the patches aren't working great on. So I would definitely go and check this one out just to know. Uh, it's good to know. And yes, almost all the security issues are always called, caused by third-party plugins. All right. Well, let's uh, bring up, I got a couple of quick news articles here. These will be a bit of interest, and this is from Apple's big thing the other day. Apple is changing podcasting yep. for the worse. And what they're basically doing is they're killing themselves. They are introducing podcasting into their world where podcasters can sign up to uh, become part of Apple, become part of a, a charging system and charge their, their listeners for the shows through the Apple podcast app. And they had such a wonderful bug with it that when podcasters did that, they actually killed their feed. <laughs> 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 and thankfully, I wasn't overly concerned with it. When I knew Apple had something up their sleeves, I had already moved all my uh, feeds over to uh, my feeds are coming through the uh, podcast 2.0 um, index. So think about that. But yeah, this is a really thing. So according to the Apple's leading a new uh, chapter in podcasts. And uh, for those of you, I don't know how many people out there listen to the show that might also be podcasters, but, uh, and you probably already know this, it may or may not be worthwhile. You already know that you do your podcasting mostly for yourself or for your few hardcore fans because only a few podcasters out there ever actually make money at it, whether they charge for it or not. It's just, the nature of the beast, I believe. I mean, I listen to a lot of great podcasts, donate to lots of them, but uh, most of them, they, they don't make much. I only know a few shows that do. All right, the final little bit of news I do have here is, as it says in our title, getting the flock out of here. It seems that the flock uh, tracking from uh, Amazon or not Amazon, Google, the new Google flock tracking thing here. Nobody's really liking it. And we'll talk more about that when we get down to the plugins because it's already in the WordPress core. There's a track ticket being proposed that it be stuffed in the WordPress core to block flock. Yeah. And this is going to be very entertaining uh, as this one plays out. So... Because flock is going to be interesting as hell. And what's the actual terminology on that? The uh, uh, federated learning of cohorts for the Chrome browser. That's right. It's it's mostly tied to the Chrome browser, but it'll eventually work its way over to the uh, to the Firefox browser, which I use. I only use Chrome for checking my email and running my Google uh, my Google Calendar because they it's they tend to break over on Firefox for some reason. 
for some reason. I do like that this is, this seems to be a, a call out, trying to get people involved, trying yeah. to get people to pay yeah. attention and read up on it and well, learn about it. They're going to pay attention because I think it's going to be on our radar for some time to come. Yeah. But with all of that, <laughs> it is time for us to... It's time to donate to WP. Plugins. A to Z. Absolutely. It's donation time. We like to talk about our donors. We bring our donors up to the front of the show as fast as we can after we get through the news and talk about those. Now, we like to get from you either your time, treasure, or talent to support this show. And that's the old point. If you're getting any value out of this show, this is a value for value show. If you get any value, saves you time, find out about a new plugin you wouldn't have heard about somewhere else because we managed to scrape up something rare. You know, you get a tip, find a really cool piece of news, anything that helps you out. Hey, help the show out. You can do that first off by donating to the show. Just go to wpplugins.com slash donate to donate to the show. But other ways you can help the show is by supporting us with your talent. And we like to acknowledge those that support their talent by talking about the artwork. I've been changing the artwork on this show going on about three years. Every show, fresh piece of artwork put out. Suggestion for the No Agenda show, and I started doing that. And for a long time, I was creating the artwork. And then some artists out there, thank you very much, started submitting artwork. Well, this week's artwork comes from Greg's Graphics at gregsgraphics.com. And it is a cool, wonderful piece of artwork that just sort of explains, get the flock out of here, a dancing uh, figurine <laughs> and a couple of, and a train set, man. Just, just go crazy. Get out of here. Go, go have fun. Well, thanks a lot, Greg. I greatly appreciate the artwork and appreciate your time. As I said, we can use some more. We're running low on artwork and I know we have uh, at least four artists that have been submitting to us. Come on, guys, catch us up. Catch us up and get us some artwork. I do like that picture. It's, I don't know why. Maybe it's the yellow, but it seems happy. It does. It does seem <laughs> happy. It's like, yeah, come on, just get the flock out of here and go have fun. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> we also like to recognize those who donate to the show. We have a special, a special executive producer's credit for those who donate $50 or more. We haven't had an executive producer in a while, but that would be kind of cool. But we do like to recognize that there are some people that still donate a few bucks every week or a couple of bucks a month to us. Thank you very much. That does help us out. It doesn't put any money in our pocket, but it does let us know that we're appreciated. So we greatly appreciate those. But the ones that we really appreciate are those that hire us because of listening to the show. Either you've hired us on to be your web hosting provider or to do web, web work or to fix a website or something like that. That does put money in our pockets. So thank you very much for that. We greatly appreciate it. Again, you want to support the show, just go to WPPluginsAtoZ.com slash donate. And also, one final thing, I'm still pimping out my daughter here for 500 bucks. You can have her pretty little mug in the live stream. All it takes is 500 cash. I think it's going to stick to 500 for a while, so I people think, want to start saving up. Yeah, we'll just leave it at 500 <laughs> for a while. We we started. I started at 50 and I kept raising. I figured 500 is a good place to sit for a while. We'll just leave it there, you know. Sooner or later, somebody will go, oh, well, maybe. So maybe, hey, I could use a Bitcoin, one Bitcoin. How about 500 bucks or one Bitcoin? That works. Or, hey, I'll take, I'll take uh, 500, uh, 500 uh, pirate coins. That would be cool. Pirate coins? That'd be cool. The pirate coins would be cool. We really need to get, a, get, get, a, get those accounts set up so that we can start accepting uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Definitely. All right. Well, with all of that, let's take off and oh, one one last thing before I do that. Don't forget if you want to send something physical to us, you know, send us a letter, send us a gift or something. There's an address in the show notes. You can send it to WP Plugins A to Z, care of John Overall at 2754 East Fairview Road, Victoria, BC, Victor 9 Alpha 5 Tom 9, Canada. Spelt with a K. <laughs> All right. Well, let's dive into what most people show up here for, and that is the plugins. Off we go into the depths of plugin depravity. All right, classic press options. We do not have any classic press options this week. It was another quiet week in classic press, and mainly because I haven't done any research, but I bet they're gearing up to do some stuff. We released some stuff a week or two ago, a couple of shows ago, 
that uh, showed that they're alive and well and kicking, and they will be bringing forth some stuff real soon. So look for them coming soon. As far as WordPress goes, though, we do have some plugins. The first one I've got right off the bat is Disable Flock Easily. Okay, this is, as we were just talking about, getting the flock out of here. It seems it has become very popular, this new surveillance arm from Google, and it's not being well received through the WordPress sphere. I get the feeling this is eventually going to happen anyway, but there are people putting up a resistance right now. And if you choose not to participate in this surveillance uh, system uh, on your particular website, you can't stop it throughout the internet, but you can stop it at your website. You can install this plugin, which tells the Google flock sensors to get the flock off your website and go somewhere else. This is the first plugin I found this morning when I was looking for looking through and doing some research on some plugins, but it wasn't the last. By the time I finished, I had found... I had a number in here until somebody edited my copy. I had a number. Oh, there it is. They changed it from a number to letters. Messing me up. <laughs> there's four that I found. Four plugins were found, and I'm sure there's more coming down the pike. Oh, yeah. And the fact that they want to stick it in core, it just tells me that this is happening. Of course, this is a free plugin. It does a good service, I believe. So I'm going to rate this one at a five. Dragon rating. <laughs> Go check it out and get the flock off your website. Yeah, I've noticed that when I'm checking out the new plugins, there's like, I, I saw about six in the first four pages yeah. when I was searching through them last night. They're just, they're popping up everywhere. And yeah. I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm not overly surprised either. So the first one I've got is search only post. So I came across this when I was looking for different options for the search functions. And I thought there would be more to this, honestly. Once you download and activate it, that's it. There's nothing else you need to do. It just forces the WordPress search function to search and only posts. And to turn this off, you need to deactivate the plugin. I had thought that there would be like a settings page where you could choose turn on or off, maybe set it up so that there'd be a time or something. I, I figured there would be something more to it, but that's just not the case. You just you activate it and it's on. Seeing how it's only for the WordPress function, though, I could see using this in conjunction with another search option, like say maybe Ivory, and then having them both up maybe and mm -hmm. like labeling them one is for posts one is for this I don't maybe know. that would work ivory if you get the premium version the ivory you can just search in posts okay you know, and you really wouldn't want to run two search plugins at the same time because they're liable to crush into each other kind of what i was thinking but that's like yeah. the that's kind of the only way i can think about this yeah. being useful unless you have a site where you only want people to see your post and nothing else on your site maybe? Well, there, there, I don't are, know. there are people that have sites like that they're they're called bloggers okay. they're, they're called okay. they're called bloggers and that's all their site is is a blog so it, it could be useful in that aspect but it does sound kind of a limiting plugin i was i was kind of underwhelmed i mean i could see it being useful i guess specifically for bloggers so if you think you could really use this, then please go check it out. Uh, it's called Search Only Post, but I personally rated it at a three. All righty. Three dragons. Yeah, well, well, there's no sound for it. That's a nice middle of the road. All right, the mm -hmm. next one I have for you. This is one that I'm checking out right now because uh, I now have an e-commerce store over at, w, or over at uh, therogestavern.com, and I'm going to have to start creating reports for my sales and other things in there. So I'm looking to find something to consolidate the reports, spit out reports, in particular tax reports, because you got to give the government their blood money all the time. Um, this is this one here looks pretty decent for a free plugin. It helps you lay out your orders by payment method, by status, by amount, by date, you know, columns, shipping totals, amount totals calculated automatically. I don't know if it does the taxes and stuff that I need so far, but I'm checking it out. And there's a lot of plugins for WooCommerce that help you go into your orders and make sense of all the data in there and separate it out and be able to pass the information on to your accounting person or whatever. At any rate, this one looked pretty good. I thought it would be one worth checking out. So if you're looking for something for WooCommerce to order up your reports 
or make, create ordered reports for your content or your, your sales, go check this plugin out. It's called Order Reports for WooCommerce, and I give it a four dragon rating. I could see that being really useful. I'm interested to know if it actually uh, adds up all the taxes and stuff that you're going to be needing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know yet. I, I know WooCommerce monitors that stuff, but the reports WooCommerce gives you from its core are not all that good. Okay. Um, my next one up is NVV Login Control. I I think this is a really neat idea. Changing up your login, making it personalized. This one has a lot of options. It comes in English and Russian, though it can it does work with translation things, so it can be put in just about any language. Um, it has like customization options for CSS or to make your own maintenance page. You can actually make the maintenance page, which I really appreciate, not just change around the words on the page. It gives you access to, cl to a closed site on behalf of any user, so long as you are a trusted user. That, that I found really cool. It's like Those are just a few of the options. There's a lot of options on there. It seems like a really in-depth plugin. I really like how much it has going for it. It's a brand new, out-of-the-box freemium plugin. So I think, hopefully, it's going to go a long way, though I could be wrong, because I do know that there are a lot of plugins like this. But I like this one. It's very user-friendly, easy to set up, runs smoothly so far. Hopefully, no bugs pop up. And it also has a, re a reCAPTCHA. I know that not many people have to really appreciate the CAPTCHAs, but I like them a lot. And if mm -hmm. you're looking to customize your login page, go and check this one out. It is NVV Login Control, and I rate it at five dragons. All right, the final one I've got for you today, 33. It's the magic number. <laughs> 33. I decided to do a random search in WordPress.org uh, plugins and see what comes up if you just type in 33 and see what plugins are related to 33. Well, there's quite a few of them. Some of them junk, cool. some of them useful. But as I was finding, I wandered in and discovered this earthquake monitor plugin. And at the sh state of the world today, it's a good thing to know about what earthquakes are happening in the world. So I decided to download it, install it, activate it, and then go check it out and see how it works. You want to see it in live action, just go check out the roguestavern.com slash news page. Scroll partway down, and it gives you a list of all oh, 2.5 earthquakes or better in the last 24 hours. Hey, we just had one in Alaska an hour ago. 2.7. Cool. Puerto Rico had a 3.6. And it gives you all the major earthquakes, 7.0 or better, in the last 180 days. So, oh, wow. Uh, so it's really kind of cool. Really just a slight piece of information to help you out. And if you're running a website with that kind of information, it pulls this information, this plugin pulls the information directly from the U.S. Geological Survey that monitors earthquakes uh, around the globe and spits that data out regularly. Also with the plugin, you can get either a widget, which sets up really fast, or you can use a short code to set it up anywhere on your site you want. So, and when you set up the short code, you get the cool multicolored text. If you set it up as a widget, you just get the plain single colored text. So at any rate, I thought it was a pretty cool plugin. I thought it was a neat piece of information to help people out, you know, if they wanted to find out this information. And the fact that it's free and does exactly what it's supposed to with no, no muss, no fuss, I have to rate this one at a five dragon rating. Go check it out. The Earthquake Monitor. That is really cool. Yeah, it's a cool little plugin. Last one I've got is Size Guarantee. This plugin is designed to make it easier for those using WooCommerce to sell clothing or other size related apparel so that their customers can have it sized more properly to them individually. What it does is it takes the customer through a size guarantee profile that they set up and that they can use any time by that customer anywhere. The shopper just needs to log in and compare the clothes from any retailer or distributor with their size profile to know the best fit. Hmm. Drawback, though, is that in order to use this for your site, you need to sign your site up with Size Guarantee website. Once you're signed up with them, you can put your API key into your plugin and off you go. Hmm. I can see major uses for this if you're a clothing store. 
Though I personally don't like the idea of having my customers create an account with a third party to shop on my site. Yeah, well, That's just my personal opinion. Data, man. Data. Got to get that data. <laughs> I rate this at four dragons. All righty. Well, that's all we got there on the plugins. This show is still brought to you by... Are you tired of the same old web hosting? Not having the resources you need to run your website properly? Having a lack of control? Then you need johnoverall.com web hosting. Providing you with all the resources you need to smoothly run your WordPress website or Classic Press website. With strict limits on the number of clients allowed per server, johnoverall.com provides high quality, fast server performance. Visit johnoverall.com for web hosting that won't slow you down. Absolutely. High quality web hosting. More people are starting to realize they need high quality web hosting. Seems more and more people are abandoning the oversold providers out there. Mm-hmm. All right. And contests. It's a contest. I do like that jingle. Thanks to Steve mm-hmm. Goodtime and Brant Matthews for that one. And uh, we don't have our contest set up yet. We're going to be we're, we're looking to bring them back live at the beginning of June. And reason being, we've taken a hiatus for multiple reasons. The reasons aren't important, but just know that they are coming back, and we're going to be giving away free licenses once again, provided by the developers out there. Why was a message deleted by the Google Moderator team? What was in there that the Google moderate Google moderator team? The hell? Oh, uh, look, uh, that was that was links to uh, donation and stuff. That's all the moderator team. They have like live moderating teams now. I guess Google is moderating our website and moderating what we're doing here. That was the links. Interesting. That was the links to 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 donate on our on our show or to to our website. It was, wasn't it? Yes, it, that was the links to donate to our website and well, that's also to also to the uh, artist's website. Well, that's fucked. <laughs> huh. <laughs> what the hell? We can't- that is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Put them back up again. They'll, they'll delete them again. Or they're going to cancel us. Well, whatever. They cancel us. They cancel us. Means we won't be able to do live anymore. We'll just do a pre-recorded show. Or hopefully Odyssey will have their streaming soon. All right. Well, so be it. Uh, where was I before I noticed that? Oh, yeah. Contest. We The contests are coming back. All right. Closing out a couple of quick things before we go into the Q&A segment. Uh, plugins I covered for this episode are Earthquake Monitor, which I rated with a Five Dragons. The order reports for WooCommerce, which I rated with four dragons. The disable flock easily, which I rated with five dragons. That could be why. Maybe they're pissed about all the uh, getting the flock out of here stuff today. Maybe. Uh, So I covered search only posts, which I rated at three. They deleted it again. Uh, Yep. They deleted it. Yeah. NVV login control, which I rated at five. And size guarantee, which I rated at four dragons. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, those are all. Yeah. Don't, I, I don't think no, there's no point in putting them back up there because they'll keep deleting them. It, yeah. Don't, don't even bother putting them up. <laughs> we have the show notes. Everyone knows to go to the show notes. Yeah, go to the show notes. All the links are in the show notes. I guess that's what we have to tell them now. We can't, we can't just put links to websites up there. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. <laughs> can't keep it up. <laughs> How to piss off Google in one easy slice. All right. <laughs> oh, they're getting faster at deleting them. They are. That was quick. Those were sniped really fast. Snipe, snipe, yep. snipe. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's quick, man. All wow. right. They're sitting there watching us. I wonder if they're listening too. Uh, we do. We do oh, have. Cool. We we do have four. We do have four listeners, and uh, I can account for a couple. So maybe there's uh, someone sneaking in here. Yeah, that's sad that they deleted the artist's link. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. Remove moderator. Who the hell is a moderator? 
Remove moderator? Oh, no. my I, Never mind. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later. All right. Let's wander on and get into this since everything is all broken and sideways. <laughs> it's question and answer time. What, Amber? Yay! Okay, so if you have any questions that you would like asked, send them to me at amber at wppro.ca. I will get them into this segment. We will get you some answers. So my first question for you is, what is internal linking? Internal linking, that is when you are linking to other posts within your website. Um, you're linking back and forth. You write up an article and say, oh, yeah, I wrote this article over here. This is a link to another post inside my website. It's internal linking. Search engines tend to like internal linking. It helps bi build, build more links and verifications of your website within itself, authority on your website within itself. Okay. Uh, my next, my next uh, question is, where do you go for open free software? Actually, there's like three questions in one here, so I'm just going to ask them all at once. Okay. Uh, where do you go for open free software? Is there a specific site? How do you know if you what you are getting is not chock full of viruses? Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll answer those. We'll answer those two questions here is in one. Open free software is available pretty much anywhere. Uh, you got to search the web for what you're looking for. Go to a site and pray that it doesn't have viruses, or run it through okay. a virus scanner. And once upon a time, it was quite safe to download that stuff, and for the most part, it's still down. It's still safe to download it. But a lot of free software is now includes um, not viruses so much as adware or they install something onto your computer that acts kind of like a virus, or they add they install add-ons into your computer, which add add-ons into your browser. So when you're surfing the web, it slows it down and serves ads to you. All kinds of other crap goes into it. Getting the good free software now is kind of hard. One of the best places for good free software is GitHub. GitHub Ooh. or Bit, Bitbucket, where developers put their, their stuff other uh, open open source stuff publicly available at GitHub, and you can go download the software direct from GitHub. So there's lots of places to get it. Uh, most of my stuff, I it, I can't even tell you where it comes from anymore. I don't download as much free software, and when I do look for something, I I sort of gauge how the website's doing, how many ads they're throwing at me, and other things to determine how how scammy they seem to be. And I don't install much on my primary computer anymore. I have a secondary computer. I'll install it on there and test it. And that secondary computer is basically a, a hole that I can toss things at and um, reformat it if something goes bad. It's your sandbox. It's a sandbox, basically. And you, your primary computer, you should never toss anything into that until you've tested it elsewhere to make sure it's not going to impact your primary computer. Once upon a time, you could have done it, but not anymore. Right, so test everything on the kid's computer first. Yeah. There you go, <laughs> test on the kid's computer. That works really well. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's that's basically it. And, and open free software, there's still a lot of it. I still have a ton of it from the, from the, from the days of it. It used to be called shareware. You know, you download a program and you just share it around and adjust it for yourself. But I've still got a lot of shareware uh, programs that are still kicking around in some of my hard drives every once in a while. I go, oh, what's all this? Like, oh, I forgot all about that. So yeah, I've got a lot of stuff from downloaded from the years. It's too bad I couldn't actually have been better at organizing it. All right. Well, read out your last question here, and then we will cut the show off and just carry it on on the YouTubers. All right. My last question is, how do you get your home base server onto a separate line? So far as I know, you can only have one internet in a house. Um, okay. That one is a very good question. And I will answer that when we come back from this. And I'll be back in a moment. Reminders for the show. All show notes can be found at wppluginsatazf.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter for more useful information delivered directly to your inbox. 
WP Plugins A to Z is a show that offers honest and unbiased reviews of plugins created by developers because you support the show. Help keep the show honest and unbiased by going to WPPluginsAtoZ.com slash donate and set the donation level that fits your budget. Help us make the show better for you by subscribing and reviewing the show shot. at Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and in the iTunes Store. You can also leave us a review on our Facebook wow. page using WPPluginsAtoZ.com slash Facebook. You can also watch the show live on YouTube, check out the screencasts and training videos, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications of all new videos. Follow the show on Twitter at WPPluginsAtoZ. John can also be reached at his website, johnoverall.com, or email him directly, john at wppro.ca. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the show. This show is copyright by johnoverall.com. So until next time, have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today. Well, let's wander into this question here. Uh, but before I do that, I want to deal with why is Google, Google moderating YouTube? Well, because they do. And I just went to check on on dealing with my moderators and my setups for moderation. I do not have it blocked to block uh, links or other things. This is actually coming from a Google moderator team, which is obviously sitting here moderating, moderating our uh, chat window right now and seeing what goes on mm. in the chat window. And not really liking us. And the fact that they got quicker and quicker at sniping those off means that somebody was sitting there more live. You know, so I don't know. They just Maybe they just don't like us anymore. And they figure that they know better than we do that we're promoting our own stuff. Maybe they don't want us promoting our own stuff. Who knows? I, I really don't know. Good Google Google is shooting itself in the foot. One day they'll be number five as far as uh, video engines go. And that'll be good. They could have they could have been the king or stayed king of it all, but now they decided that they would kowtow to all of the social justice warrior crap. So let's finish off this last question, and I'm out of here. All right. How do you get your home base server into a separate line? So far as I know, you can only have one internet in the house. Well, that's not true. You can have two, three, and four routers into your house. I have had it from the cable provider. I had two separate cable routers into the house. Um, you pay a separate fee for each one. That's one way you can do it, get a separate router. The other way you can do it is it's not so easy with the new routers, but once upon a time with the old routers, you could you could split off and have separate networks in the old router. And one run network off to your server and one to the rest of your house. The safest and easiest way now is to have two separate routers into your house. And that is easily done. The cable company doesn't care how many you have. You could have five in there if you wanted, if you wanted to pay five separate bills for them. But, but I, I called and I asked my provider, and they told me that I can't do that. I can only just have the one because it's my one address. You only get one per address. Really? I used to have two in, in my address. Until I no, that is so I, weird. I, until I no longer needed the second one. Okay. You know, I used to have two in there until I no longer needed the second one. They must, they might have changed the rules then, as far as I know. Okay. But they. Well, used I guess to- I'll be, I'll be contacting them again because having so many people doing work online all at once is starting to cause some havoc. Well, you're still limited by the cable coming into your house. Hmm. You know, and uh, there's, there's. You don't get you don't get much more. You got to remember, it's kind of like the the joy I love about working from home in this apartment building is that the vast majority of people in this building are gone during the day. So mm-hmm. my internet's very fast at night. My internet slows down dramatically in this building. Hopefully, it's going to speed up soon because everyone's going to move off of the uh, cable provider and move into the Telus provider, and uh, because they rewired the building for the TELUS fiber optics and everyone's going to jump on that, opening up all the cable bandwidth. 
because there's a limited mm-hmm. amount of bandwidth on the cables, no matter what. Like the apartment building I lived in before, I convinced I, I convinced the cable company uh, to come in and rewire the whole building. And for my corner of the building, they only put six apartments on that on that one block uh, cool. for that corner of the building, which made suddenly my uh, my internet speed just became lightning fast. And that was before gigabit speeds. You know, I was getting I was getting close to the gigabit speeds we get now. You know, it was amazing when I moved to this building here. I took a sudden down downgrade in speed. You know, it's it's there's only so much bandwidth coming out of out of each building or house, and the more routers you put on it, the longer it takes. It's like you think about it this way: it's like the a cable provider provides. You know, I live in an apartment building. It's got one address with a hundred apartments in it. Yeah, you know, they can provide a hundred routers to it. It's still one. Okay. Ad- it's still one address. So, so a person living in a house where like they they're the only part of the house that is on one company, mm-hmm. are they still sharing with everyone in the area? Who's they're they're, they're sharing with people in the area, but not as much. It, it, okay. it, it lessens, it changes the further, you know, you, the closer you, the further out you get, the more stuff is in the line. It depends on where their boosters are to your house, where it connects to the next booster in the network and where it connects to the grand node in the network. There's, there's lots of things that go into building out a network. So, okay. So in order to speed up your internet capability, it's not just about getting a separate line, so to speak. No. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's more it's more about everything else that goes into it's it. It's about everything that goes into it if you're trying to speed up your network. It's about everything that goes into it. It's like you live in a house that's got very old cables. Your cables for that house might be from the 1970s. You know, they might be old copper cables in that house. And that doesn't trans- transmit data very fast. You know, they might be the thin copper cables versus the really thick ones they use now. So okay. there's a lot to it. Hemnian is here. Hey, Hi, Hemnian. Hemnian. Nice of you to show up just in time for us to wrap it all up. <laughs> but he did say he wants a second login screen, or better yet, a pop-up that will only be for a specific user, i.e. a guest login, without interfering with the main login. Oh. Is there a plugin that can do that? Uh, I don't think NVV login control is quite one. right. Better yet, a pop up that will only be for a specific user. There is plugins. I have seen them in the past. I just don't know what they are. Um, I may have. I'll make covered, a note and look I, I may have it. covered something like that without interfering with main login. Yes, there are plugins that do that. I've seen one or two. So uh, I've, I've yeah, seen them. I'll, I'll, I've I'll seen look them. into I, it. I've covered something like that year uh, years ago, maybe. I don't know. I've been doing this for ten years now, so I've covered so many plugins that I've just lost track. But I do I do recall something like that out there. All right. Well thanks a lot for showing up, Hemdian. <laughs> Hope your business meeting Hang went on. well. Uh Hemdian, if you want to shoot me an email at amber at WPPRO, I can probably get back to you before next week's show on Thursday about a plugin that'll do that. Yeah, you should do that. WPPRO.ca. So. Get that get that CA in there. So nobody sends it to yeah. dot com. Uh, I've already had people send stuff to the WPPro.com, and I don't own that domain. So whoever owns it gets occasional email from me. <laughs> they yeah, they if you want to shoot me an email, then I'll get back to you before next Thursday about the plugin because I think I know where that information is. All right, well, we'll call that a wrap. Google's been mean to us today, and so yep. be it. We'll just let it ride at that, and, uh, well, maybe they'll leave us alone on another time. I'm going to give us a little bit of thunder out of here, and we'll wrap it up. These are the days of thunder. We're going to make time stand still. A quarter after midnight, and I'm watching the wall. Sometimes I feel so uptight. I just can't sleep at all Every day doing the same old thing We're losing time The weekend comes, we gotta have some fun And rewind These are the days of thunder We're gonna make time stand still We gotta
of thunder. We're gonna make time stand still. We gotta feel the hunger. Hang it over the edge just to taste the thrill. These are the days of thunder. We're gonna make time stand still. We gotta feel the hunger. Hang it over the edge just to taste the Alrighty, that's all we got for you folks. Take care now. Bye-bye. Take care. Adios, mofo.